This is a brief video podcast series of videos in which we will be going through the 12 cranial nerves, looking at their 3D orientation using models and how they exit the cranial vault. In this segment, we'll be looking at cranial nerve 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, which all have relatively simple paths that can be explained relatively quickly. Cranial nerve 5 is a bit more complex and will be explained in a subsequent session. First cranial nerve that we will look at is cranial nerve 1, which we can see on this plastic model as it would exit off of the brain and rest on the cribriform plate. Looking at an additional dry skull model, we will once again see the ethmoid bone sitting in the frontal bone area, and we can see the crystagalli and the cribriform plate on either side where cranial nerve 1 would rest. Cranial nerve 2 also has a relatively straightforward path. We can see cranial nerve 2 here, represented by number 28 in this model, as it goes through the optic canal, and then enter the orbit to run into the posterior aspect of the eye. Once again, on a dry skull model, This would be the optic canal here that the probe is entering through. And if we look at the model from the front, we can, can see the continuation into the orbit. Cranial nerve three, four, and six all have fairly similar paths as they all exit through the superior orbital fissure. Here we see cranial nerve 3, the smaller cranial nerve 4, and cranial nerve 6. And as we rotate this around, we can see that a portion of the skull has been schematically removed. This would be the location of the superior orbital fissure here. And this is where we can see the three branches, these three branches, along with the ophthalmic branch of cranial nerve 5, which we'll discuss in a later video, all exiting through the superior orbital fissure. We can then see them going to the respective muscles, and in this case, we can also see the ciliary ganglion, which will receive parasympathetics from cranial nerve 3, as well as sympathetics coming from the sympathetic chain traveling up through the skull um, with the ophthalmic artery in this case. And those would each jump onto the short ciliary nerves and in the case of the sympathetics, the long ciliary nerves to enter the sclera and the back of the eye. Finally, just looking at this on a dry skull representation, we can see once again the superior orbital fissure in the back and from the front where cranial nerves 3, 4, first division of 5, and 6 all enter into the orbit.